Right. So uh, first of all, uh, welcome. Thanks for coming to LBL. If it's your first time. If you join the audience, uh, if you join Zoom, just don't join the audience. Yeah. 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 Did you get it? Did you so, yeah. We'll we'll explain that because that's part of how we give talks around here. I think. Um, yeah. All right. So Kelly is in charge of Zoom here. She set it up. So. All right. So what I I have to do um, a little introduction here, including a little bit of safety stuff, especially for people who have been here the first time, and then we'll talk about the discourse. So there's a a topic on discourse where we're collecting ideas for breakouts and things that people want to organize together. So if you want to go out for dinner or whatever, that'd be a great place also to kind of put that stuff together. Talk about the agenda a little bit and go over the code of conduct. Um, so I was curious before we got into the safety stuff though, to find out how many people kind of consider themselves to be from the science user facility side. So that'd be like people who are part of an experiment or a place that, you know, a telescope or something like that. Okay, that's a good, how many people are like from the high performance computing centers or the computing centers? Yeah, so I say that's me too. Yeah, you're confusing me. And how about people who are kind of overlap both? Yeah, so this is, this is great. Like, I think most everybody raised their hand at least once. So um, there's, I mentioned there's like 45 people. I think when we had initial expression of interest from people, we had like over 80 people interested and um, so we you know we have only a finite number of seats for people so it, we, we were really kind of ha we had to turn people away it was it's pretty rough to figure that out um, well we but I think that that um, reflects the importance of the topic and I think that um, you know we have people from management and policy people who are listening in or hanging out with us so I think that they're interested also in what we're doing in this space um, the format is we're going to have um, talks in the morning and then breakouts in the afternoon. We have about 15 talks over three days, so like five each day. We have lightning talks also. We have a few spaces left for lightning talks. Lightning talks are like 10 minutes. So if you've got an idea for a lightning talk, I think we have maybe two or three slots left. Um, there is time in the afternoon for breakouts and hacking. Effectively, that can start at 12 noon. If you want to grab lunch and then go start hacking, you can. Um, at the end of the breakout sessions, we're going to meet back in here and then have report outs from the breakout. So just show and tell what you did during the breakout. And in terms of breakout topics, we're collecting those on discourse. I'll get to that in a second, but also there's a box I drew on the wall back there. We have these cool walls where you can uh, write with, uh, with markers, with not any kind of marker, but, you know, whiteboard <laughs> marker. And you can say, hey, I have an idea I want to talk about. Uh, spawn hooks or something like that you can you can do that there and then people could like put a check mark and then we can right before going to break out decide which ones we're gonna have um, enjoy the weather if it doesn't heat up or if we have a fire hopefully we don't have like a fire we had one yesterday nearby um, but what you should do here is meet everybody and try to include everybody in your conversations we had this cool pac-man rule on last year if you remember which was if you're standing in a circle and there's somebody over here, kind of Pac-Man, open the Pac-Man mouse and pull that person in. Um, and if there's old projects that you just haven't been able to, to, to finish, you know, try to revive those and get those going. And we're going to have a breakout on helping to prepare a white paper. I'm going to aggressively invite all the speakers to contribute a section to a white paper, which is a deliverable from this workshop we need to do. And so... Later, and so I'll make sure everybody speaking knows what's going on there. So, oh, we have stickers. Oh, and we have stickers. Okay, great. Got to have stickers. All right. So, safety minute. Safety minute is should be like a minute or whatever. Uh, there's a fire. It will be obvious because there will be horns and strobes, and they'll be very loud. And what you should do is evacuate through any of the exits on this side, the east side. And if we're obviously we're in this room, just shoot out that door. If you're on the third floor, you can use that door. Okay. If you're on the fourth floor, you're not supposed to use that door. Um, if possible, you can take your stuff, but just don't take a long time getting all your stuff together um, because you might not be able to come back. And then um, there'll be building emergency team people. So they'll have like a vest or whatever and a hard hat. And actually, I'm one of them, but I'm not going to go get that. Um, 
And then they'll, what they'll do is they'll tell you where to, uh, where to walk and it'll be up the hill and up to the next building, okay? And there's another assembly area which is out that way, which if for whatever reason you're on that side of the building, just go down and cross the road that you came up on and go down the stairs there and you can wait there. Uh, anybody with limited mobility um, should, should go to one of these areas of refuge, which is outside the northeast or southeast stairwell on either side there and then let other people um, uh, who are leaving get in contact with the build emergency team and tell them that, that you might need help. They have radios. Okay, so this is a map of the building. So when you're right here, and you just leave that way, or if you're farther away from that door, you can use either of those two. And then of course, we're in California. The Hayward Fault goes like right over there, you know, like right under the road. <laughs> So if there's an earthquake, get under the desks here and hold on to them and wait until the shaking's all done and then you know come out and they'll tell you what to do. Leave the building is gonna be what they tell you to do. Okay? Um, restrooms are right over there. Okay? And then recycling is a challenge here at Berkeley Lab. It's a test for people usually. There's like five different ways that you can throw away trash, but we have compostable paper, landfill stuff. If you have questions, just ask, ask somebody that looks like they know what they're doing. <laughs> all right, so um, in terms of the agenda, that's all on our website. And so um, I've included the website URL up here, but also I think I've sent it a few times in an email, so you should be able to find one of my many emails. Just to remind everybody, first two days are gonna be up here at NERSC, and then the third day, Thursday, is gonna be down at BIDS, which is on the UC Berkeley campus, so you won't ride the shuttle up, and if you're staying at the guest house, you need to ride the shuttle down to the north side of campus, and tomorrow we'll have instructions on how to get to BIDS if you need them, but there's, there should be some instructions on how to get there on the website right now. Um, it's in the library. Um, it's, it's a kind of bigger space than this, I think. Um, so we're going to have, I mentioned talks, there are 30 minutes, lightning talks are 10 minutes. Um, the way that um, we're going to do the talks, the AV is a little complicated, but we've over years figured out this is what works best for our system. We have an AV system where there's a Mac Mini somewhere in the room, and the podium logs into that basically, and then it's projected here on these screens. And so if you're giving a talk, what you should do is you should take your laptop and you should dial into the Zoom, which is here, but don't join the audio, but Kelly's turned off all the audio stuff. And then you just share your screen and then you can um, give your talk over, over, um, over the Mac Mini that way. And we're also recording the talks. And so we'll have those posted once we get all the recording worked out. On, on the agenda page, same with slides. We like to collect everybody's slides, of course. And uh, so we'll, we'll come after you for those if you, if you haven't sent them already. Um, I mentioned discourse. We have a discourse topic. There's a link here on the agenda page where if you have an idea for breakouts or you want to collaborate with people or you want to organize, like I'm going to dinner or something like that, you can, you can do that there. But um, we've seeded it with a few ideas of things to talk about breakouts but we're, we're looking for more so please you know and if you if you like something there you know make sure to say you know thumbs up to that or whatever um, and then for the breakouts um, we're gonna have two or three breakout today we have three rooms that we can use in this building for breakouts tomorrow we'll only have two because there's a competing meeting um, there's also some room across the way in building 50 that Shreyas here, this is raise your hand, Shreya. So Shreyas will take people over to breakouts if we if we need the rooms over there uh, today and tomorrow. And then of course, if you have like you don't really need a whole room or something, it's just you and another person maybe sitting and talking or hacking some stuff together. You can go outside if the weather is nice and just sit out there. Or there's also a cafeteria up the way, which might be uh, uh, good for later in the afternoon. Yeah. It, Today is better than yesterday. Uh, all right, so um, I'm, almost, uh, I'm almost perfectly on time. Um, so this is kind of the start of the morning agenda. We're gonna have, um, uh, Fernando's gonna do a welcome and, a, and an introduction of, of our keynote speaker, who's Michael over there, and then 
Um, Rick, wait, no, Rick's here. All right, good. So I don't have to adjust the schedule on the fly here. And then we'll have a break after those talks. And there'll be two more talks and then um, lightning talks. And I think we have room for one more lightning talk here today. So if you want us to propose a lightning talk at the last minute, just send, shoot me an email um, and I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. So um, are there any questions? Any, if you have any questions at all, you know, you can find me, you can find any of the other committee people. So just to make sure everybody knows who those are, here's Shane, raise your hand, Shane. And, and Kelly and Treas and me. So we're, we're from LBL and then Dan back there is from, from Brookhaven. So if there's any questions, let us know. And then finally, um, I need to mention that we do have uh, posted on the website a code, of, a code of conduct and you all agreed to this. Uh, when you showed up. So if you haven't read it or in a while, you should reread it again. But if there are any issues, please feel free to contact any of the, of the organizers. This is my, um, my phone number that goes straight to my, my cell phone and then uh, we can, can start working it out from there. Okay, all right. So with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Fernando. All right. Do you want that? All right, sure. That's what I right. Morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to keep this brief. I'm not going to use uh, 15 minutes. My name is Fernando Perez. Um, I have a dual appointment here at the lab to be just down that hall, uh, but now I spend most of my time down on campus in the statistics department. Uh, I want to start by, by thanking you all for coming, in particular by thanking the, the organizing committee. Roland has done a ton of work, um, but also Dan. Uh, it's great to have other labs participating. Chris Holgreff, I think, joins us tomorrow from, from bids. Uh, from nurse, uh, Debbie, Shane, Shreyas, and Kelly. I uh, really appreciate it. it it's fantastic to, to, see, um, to see this coming together. This kind of began probably what, like two years ago at a lunch, at a lunch at CLES, I think was kind of one of the first times when we, when we had a conversation to try to get sort of a community around this, this path. big thing that produces data, right? Big thing, maybe telescope, maybe high throughput genome sequencing facility, maybe light source, maybe particle accelerator. Um, Big thing wants and needs compute next to it because big thing isn't quite just producing raw data. Now you actually want compute potentially in the in, in a semi live loop, right? Because maybe you want to run simulations on an HPC facility to monitor what you're doing. Maybe the data itself needs enough complex reconstruction that that it's not just the data comes out and you can look at it, but actually getting something meaningful out of the data requires heavy duty compute um, and getting to the point where you want that compute to happen potentially in real or quasi real time where the human can still make decisions because maybe the human actually based on what they see is going to reallocate resources, change parameters in the experiment. Uh, they only have a finite amount of time um, allocated on that, on that facility and they're gonna be kicked out of it for, for potentially months after that and they wanna make the most out of it. So there's a number of reasons why that pattern Big thing, big expensive thing, producing data that doesn't want to stop to wait for you. Next, the big compute thing that is expensive to run and that wants to run at peak capacity with a flat, with a flat utilization curve is connected to a human who wants to take a sip of coffee, needs to go to the bathroom, has a brain that needs to think, uh, or needs to talk to their colleague maybe to kind of muse about something, needs to get on the whiteboard. How do we make that work? It's an interesting and complicated technical and social challenge. And I hope that in this workshop, we'll come up with ideas on both sides because I think there's a lot of interesting technical work to be done here. There's issues on deployment, customizability, uh, access to high, high throughput streaming data, balancing of the very real needs and constraints that the people who run these kinds of facilities have, right? They don't tell you that they want to keep running the thing without stopping to wait for you just because they want to annoy you. It's because the big thing, be it the machine, the, the HPC facility or the scientific instrument is potentially very expensive to run and a unique resource. So there's reasons for that, for that. But, but we, need, we need to get creative because at the same time, simply using our supercomputers to heat up the room is probably not the best use of those machines. What uh, Kathy Yellick, who used to be director of NERSC, once put it as, I want NERSC to be the facility that produces the most science per megawatt. 
And I think that's the right metric, not a flat LINPAC, uh, LINPAC running like that out of health curve, but, but science throughput. And that does mean optimizing for the combined usage of the human and, uh, and the machinery. Jupiter is kind of at the heart of that. that that's what we do. We are a system, uh, legal system precisely for human in the loop interaction. Scientific, uh, scientific computing. Jupiter Lab is just coming out. Uh, hopefully 1.0 will be in the next few days, I think. Uh, Jupiter Lab is designed to be a highly modular, very flexible um, system precisely for interactive scientific computing with the potentials for lots of extensions. So I hope out of this workshop, good ideas will come on how do we use these tools, these new tools, better environments. Um, it also presents challenges in customization, in single user deployment, and um, reproducibility is an area which is a big problem in, in every context. In this kind of environment where the data sets are gigantic, where the instruments, the physical instruments that produce it are unique, and where the HPC resources are big, reproducibility is like difficult, difficulty cubed or something like that. It's an awfully nasty problem. I'd like to see ideas coming out of here um, that at least make, make a little bit of a dent on that problem, if not, uh, if not being, uh, being complete solutions. Um, I hope that we, I like to describe kind of what Jupiter is a little bit as a kind of Maslow pyramid of needs type of thing. Um, and at the top, at the very top, um, we have a few services that the project runs, and I put them at the top because the services really do run on the stuff that comes beneath, uh, beneath them. Services like Binder, like uh, uh, Jupyter, uh, like the Jupyter demos, like NB Viewer. We don't run a ton of services as a project because service, services are an expensive and time-consuming thing to, to do. Uh, these kinds of things definitely run services, right? Facilities are very much entities that run services, compute or data, uh, or scientific instrument type services for their users. Uh, those run on top of open source software. That's probably what people think of as Jupyter, is the software layer. Yes, it's artifacts. There's GitHub repos that you can pip install, install and whatnot. Um, but I think that one of the important things is that the, the Jupyter, and we put a ton of time in, in the Jupyter project in, that, in ensuring that that software is actually the embodiment of ideas that themselves are openly documented, openly specified, argued and debated with the community so that they're a good fit. So for example, we don't just have something that calls Python code. We developed a proper protocol for how, what does it mean to have an interactive UI that connects to a stateful kernel, and we worked with the community on refining what that should look like, and today there's about 100 different implementations of kernels for the Jupyter protocols, right? So we took the time in documenting that. The notebook format is itself separately documented. The JSON schema is specified. So you can think of our software libraries as an implementation of something more fundamental, which, is the, which are these standards, standards and protocols. There's other UIs for the notebook. We've produced two, the classic one, and Jupyter Lab. Uh, but other teams have produced others. Interact has its, its own set of new UIs. The CoCalc team has produced effectively a brand new separate UI that runs on the CoCalc machinery. Uh, the, uh, at Google Lab, be a fork, but a heavily customized fork uh, of an old version of IPython that runs on Google infrastructure, so on and so forth. And that's important. We want that. We want an ecosystem that where, where the, the core ideas are agreed upon to enable interoperability, but where there is a diversity of implementations that may fit certain patterns differently. If somebody here has ideas on that front, on new things that you want to try out, go for it. The team and, and the core team welcomes and embraces that. Uh, we always want to ensure that it's not unnecessary duplication and if there's something that can be better done um, at the core, let's discuss it, let's improve kind of the, the bottom layers, but we absolutely welcome exploration in that direction. Um, and that stuff doesn't exist in an abstract space. It exists on top of the most important base layer, which is a community. And we really want to emphasize that we want to build a strong community. This is a kind of space where we haven't had historically a lot of representation and I would love to see that change to see that grow by community i mean people who work together people who build things together people who respect each other people who develop new projects together people who get funding together with the we we uh, hear how many of you come from from outside of the u.s kind of funding space basically canada europe etc okay so a few of you are not u.s would be great um countries canada germany spain spain 
Canada. Canada. So some some EU potential EU funding. Some Canada has been doing amazing um, amazing work in treating Jupiter effectively as national infrastructure. Uh, and we look forward to more of that. I think it would be great if we develop if we show funding work done with with fund from funding uh, from funded by by national or as as is the case in Europe transnational funding agencies in collaboration and in cooperation also with the US funding agencies we're talking a lot more to DOE to NSF to NIH um, this kind of pattern is now hitting it this kind of thing used to be a little bit more the purview of DOE DOE has been kind of a most of this kind of stuff. It has been involved with things like particle physics at CERN, which is the, the prototypical example of this kind of thing for 30, 40 years. Um, but this pattern is now happening across agencies. Uh, all the agencies are now having this kind of flavor of problem. I think it would be fantastic if, if effectively this community emerges as a set of leaders in that space across national and international boundaries. Um, I'm always happy to help when I can um, with these things. Um, I will be in Europe, I'll be in Switzerland in October. Um, if anyone is, if any of the European folks are gonna, are gonna be there um, talking to Swiss universities about open science, um, I'm always happy to help if I can, but, but nothing has to bottleneck on me or on us. Um, I hope that lots of collaborations will, will emerge on um, in this space. Uh, because the project does need uh, need resources, and I think one of the reasons why I'm interested in this is both because I think we provide some of the right tools for this problem, and because these are the kinds of agencies that can commit resources in a more steady fashion, so that you have you have a little bit less of the crazy um, of the crazily fluctuating uh, resource. Um, kind of a windstorm that that tends to buffet us uh, quite often in shorter term projects because agencies that commit to building a facility that is not going to be turned off for 10 years um, have a different kind of mindset on, on, on how they fund and how they see infrastructure. So hopefully we can have an impact in that space. And I do think it's scientifically the right thing to do. It's not just because I'm interested in funding the project, but, but it's because I'm convinced it has the right building blocks for a class of problems, which I think is just emerging. I think we're at kind of at the beginning. Obviously, CERN has existed for a long time, but I think the explosion of this across the sciences is something that is just starting. So I think this, we're very much at the beginning of something that I hope will be very fruitful for a long time. I think this will be a great and productive workshop. Thank you again for coming. Thanks to the organizers. Uh, Thanks to Bloomberg for funding this. We we have had a fantastic collaboration with Bloomberg as a company. They've they've put a ton of effort, uh, both human, uh, behind the, things like the development of Jupiter Lab. And this workshop is made possible because Bloomberg donated resources for actually a collection of community workshops. Um, some of the folks in this room were a week ago in Paris uh, working on a different workshop around that. I think Lindsay is going to give a talk about some of that, some of that work, uh, one of the lightning talks. Um, and there's another uh, event next week at Bloomberg around that and the funding that the company has provided for these kinds of community, um, community driven events around different parts of the project has been extremely uh, helpful and useful. So if you see some of the Bloomberg folks like Paul Ivanov in the back, uh, give them a thanks. So anyway, I won't take more time. Um, I want to close by welcoming Michael, uh, uh, our next uh, Keynote speaker Michael Milligan from the Minnesota Supercomputing Center. Uh, I think we first met in 2016 online uh, when we organized a, a kind of a baby version of something like this, which was a one day workshop basically to talk about Jupyter Hub deployments and for people to discuss how they were trying to use Jupyter Hub in their own environments. Uh, and Michael had a great presentation about the work he was doing. Uh, I look forward to seeing how that has evolved uh, today. So without further ado, let's welcome Michael. Thank you, everyone.